Most animals possess incredible emotional intelligence and can sense when another creature needs their help. In this heartwarming story, a dog discovered an injured crow and took it to safety in its crate. Initially, everyone doubted the bird's chances of survival, but an unbelievable miracle happened. Dogs and crows are among the most impressively intelligent species on Earth. While dogs excel as security and human support systems, crows are known for their problem-solving skills and tool usage. If we had asked you before this video, the chances of a dog and a bird becoming friends might have seemed slim to none. However, this story showcases an exceptional duo that defied all odds to form a unique friendship, meet Roxy, a courageous and curious Caucasian shepherd, and Huck, a crow. Their extraordinary bond began on a rainy day when Roxy overcame her aversion to rain to help a distressed creature. Through the pelting rain and fierce winds, Roxy heard the anguished cries of the injured bird just a few feet away from her crate. Determined to lend a paw, she bravely ventured out and discovered a small black crow with a broken leg. The bird's helpless cawing tugged at Roxy's heartstrings, prompting her to act swiftly. Despite their differences, these unlikely friends formed a powerful connection that reminds us of the compassion and kindness that can exist between species, amidst the heavy rain, Roxy sprang into action, carefully gripping the injured bird in her jaws to ensure it wouldn't sustain further harm. She dragged the crow back to her crate, providing a safe haven from the relentless downpour. For hours, Roxy remained faithfully by the crow's side, cuddling and keeping him warm. When the rain finally ceased and Roxy's owners emerged, they were astounded to find a bird in the crate alongside their dog. Initially alarmed, they feared Roxy had caused harm. However, when Roxy approached them with a worried expression, they realized something was amiss. Hastily, the owners examined the crow, discovering a bruised leg and a broken wing. Barely breathing and shivering from the cold, they carefully tended to the bird's injuries, bandaging its leg and wing. Their efforts to warm the bird helped it regain consciousness, albeit disoriented and determined to escape. Roxy, the crow's unknown hero, approached him gently, prodding him with her head and placing a reassuring paw upon him. Though initially terrified by the dog's formidable presence, the crow gradually found solace, growing calmer in Roxy's company. The humans provided nourishment, allowing the crow, now named Huck, to explore his immediate surroundings, albeit cautiously due to his injured leg. Roxy, surprising her owners with her tender care, displayed remarkable gentleness toward her new friend, making sure not to accidentally knock him over with her exuberant energy. However, Huck remained weak from his injuries, prompting the humans to contact a veterinarian friend who lived nearby. When the pouring rain persisted and the prospect of driving to a distant vet center seemed risky, the veterinarian arrived at the scene. After examining and treating the bird, she administered pain medication, skillfully bandaged the wing, and applied a soothing salve to the bruised leg. However, it became apparent that the bird's condition was grave. Without additional care and attention, his chances of survival through the night seemed dim. The collective decision was made to fashion a suitable makeshift bed for the crow, accompanied by a lamp for warmth and swaddled in cozy blankets in an attempt to counteract the effects of frigid exposure. Once the bird was settled in for the night, the veterinarian departed, and Roxy's owners retired to bed, hoping for a peaceful rest that would aid the crow's recovery. Nonetheless, they remained cautious, unsure of what the next day would bring. As the humans attempted to coax Roxy back outside to her crate, the dog vehemently resisted, determined to remain by her new companion's side. Recognizing her unwavering loyalty, they acquiesced, realizing that leaving the bird alone was not an option. Little did they know that this particular decision would soon prove pivotal in saving poor Huck's life. Shortly after midnight, an urgent cry pierced through the house, signaling Huck's distress. With no awake humans in sight, his guardian angel was right there, Roxy. Positioned on the floor, she swiftly raced to the box where Huck lay. Observing his uncontrollable shivering, she recognized the intensity of his cold-induced pain. Anyone witnessing this trembling creature would assume that his fate was sealed. However, Roxy, displaying incredible and unexpected heroism, acted swiftly. 
Without a moment's hesitation, she stepped into the box, nestling close to the bird, sharing her body heat with him. As Roxy's owners descended the stairs, they were astounded by what met their eyes. Their beloved dog had valiantly taken it upon herself to protect her new friend from freezing throughout the night. Roxy and her humans had kept a vigilant watch, and by morning, the crow showed signs of improvement. Though none of them had managed to sleep a wink, they rejoiced in the bird's newfound strength. When the owners relayed the remarkable events to the vet, she admitted that Roxy's actions had likely saved Huck's life, hypothermia was a common threat for birds exposed to heavy, cold rain like Huck had endured. Yet, in some incredible way, Roxy possessed an innate understanding of how to respond in such situations, demonstrating remarkable emotional intelligence and single-handedly preserving a life. Inspired by this extraordinary bond, the humans decided to adopt the bird as a companion for Roxy, bringing joy to both Roxy and Huck. The two quickly formed an inseparable friendship, and Roxy wasted no time in teaching her crow brother how to play. Playing with a ball became their favorite shared activity, the dynamic duo showcased their antics in hilarious and heartwarming videos shared on social media. The sight of Roxy sitting calmly while Huck enthusiastically kicked a small ping-pong ball warmed the hearts of viewers. Intrigued by this unique pairing, people eagerly awaited more videos. Roxy's owners happily complied, showcasing their ongoing adventures. Sometimes, Huck would perch on Roxy's back, and on occasion, they even engaged in an amusing game resembling soccer with the ping-pong ball. When two incredibly intelligent animals come together, magic unfolds. As the video concluded, viewers were invited to share their own stories of their dog bringing home lost creatures or their pets discovering peculiar objects. The comments section would surely be filled with delightful anecdotes. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Let's continue. Hello everyone, humans are the most common cause of tragedy in the animal world. But when another person manages to correct the mistakes made by their predecessors, others praise him. That's what happened to the man in our story today, near a fast-moving river in eastern Siberia, and let me introduce you to the story. It was a spring morning, and a villager went fishing. He brought a tackle without a float. The young man hoped to catch a trout or other small fish. He chose an open place with no trees on the bank. The spot is pre-baited and the man throws the bait into the water with a slam, grailing frolics in the fisherman's net. The excited fisherman catches fish after fish, rejoicing at his success. The man didn't notice a bear cub coming from behind him. Judging from the animal's appearance, it looked straight at the man's fish. It was obvious that it was hungry. Seeing that the man ignored him, the bear complained softly. The surprised man turned to see his guest approaching the fish, and the little bear picked up the slippery fish and began to feast on it happily. Having eaten half of the fish, the guest took the rest and walked towards the nearest forest bush. And the men continue to fish, and the fish are no longer hooked. Near the bank they must have moved towards the middle of the river. The men in waterproof pants and boots decided to get in the water, throwing their fishing gear farther into the river. It was the right decision and the fisherman caught three more fish in the river in half an hour, imagine this man's surprise when he saw a bear cub standing in the water next to him. It's the same bear he was treating a fish with recently, the bear turned his gaze to the fish in the net. The man reached the shore and gave his guest another fish. He took the grayling and went back to the forest. This behavior intrigued the man, so he decided to follow the bear at a safe distance. The bear cub walked down a forest path, carefully gripping the slippery prey with his teeth, and disappeared into the willows after walking about 50 meters. The curious fisherman slowly parted the branches and found a clearing in the dense undergrowth of the forest. The man saw a bear lying on its side. Apparently the mother bear was injured, unable to move and hunting alone. Now he knew exactly who the little bear had been taking the fish to, and after seeing the animals in the forest, the man decided to go back to fishing. Salmon are an important item for bears along the coast, as they can sit in the throats of streams and the salmon will come to them. Chasing humans provides very little nourishment, and bears will attack and kill humans, 
but only if threatened. Hunting humans is almost unheard of. If you put a bunch of food in your tent, the bear might take a bite, the same way you get candy at the cash register when you're already there after all. Put the same food in a bag and hang it on a tree so you are safe. A smart bear might still get food, but they almost never pass a sleeping human a few hundred feet away. It so happens that some people harm nature without thinking about the consequences, while others try to right wrongs to restore balance. It is the eternal interplay of good and evil. If one person gets the chance to help, the whole world really does get a little bit better. Set in a picturesque location in eastern Russia, near a very dense tall forest, this story tells of the collision of good and evil actions, and a miracle happens. I'll tell you everything from the beginning. This happened in early spring, when the forest was still growing relentlessly. Nearby villagers will go fishing. There are also a lot of mushrooms and fish by the river, and the locals often grab them and eat them. Bears may engage in aggressive behavior towards humans even when they are not hungry, usually to protect themselves or protect their cubs. Bears living in the depths of the wilderness don't know enough about humans and avoid them. However, this does not prevent them from coexisting, everything in this world is balanced and interconnected, until the invasion of humans. Bears are constantly working to replenish their fat reserves for the winter, and their food choices reflect this. Bears are omnivores, but live mainly on plants and insects. They also eat other people's food, poach prey from other predators and eat newborn herbivores. This is low effort, high reward food. He bagged the fish and took it to the injured bear cub, being careful not to get too close to the brown mother before packing everything up and heading home, the man decided to report the bear to the area game department, so rescue arrived in time. The bear was saved. It is likely that poachers have harmed the bears, unfortunately they often come here to hunt. The fisherman he saved two lives and showed the bear that not all men are cruel, careless killers. They don't know what compassion is. Friends, if you like this story, be sure to share the video with your friends, don't forget to like this video and subscribe our channel. In nature's plan, people often make fatal mistakes that lead to the tragic death of animals. Many people believe that it is better to do nothing and not interfere with the natural process of life, but sometimes it is also the case that in our stories, human beings must show their love and do their part to save the troubled animal. The protagonist encounters such a thing and helps the animals. It happened near a river in Siberia when everyone was enjoying the warm spring sun. Because the fisherman's wife didn't expect that he would catch a big fish. It all started when the man decided to fish from morning till night, but could hardly find a coast without plants grown by the fisherman. His first cast was surprising and the fish was very active which changed his mood immediately. He held his rod excitedly, thinking that in a few hours his bucket would be full of trout and other fish. Suddenly a strange noise in the bushes caught his attention. He turned to see three cubs coming out of the bushes, and although they weren't dangerous, he felt a strange chill run down his spine. He knew it was probably their mom walking somewhere nearby, and he tried not to make any big movements. He began to slowly gather his tools, and he kept his eyes on the cubs who looked thin and skinny. Taking a closer look, he pulls out several fish and places them in front of them. The little bear ate the food voraciously. The fisherman couldn't help but shed tears when he saw the little bear. Coming out of the forest, it was too late to run, he stood still, staring into the mother bear's eyes, but when he got a better look, he could hardly control his screaming, he was appalled that the bear was so old and frail. Did he know that there is usually only one cub among old bears? But there were exceptions, fatal was the birth of three cubs, it did not have enough milk to feed them, to make them stronger and healthier, the fisherman did not hesitate to pour them all his fish. He knew that without help, the bear would die because nature rarely forgives genetic errors such as those that have happened to these animals. The fisherman came home late that night and his wife scolded him for not catching any fish. The next day he went down to the river again and got some food for the bears from the house, and the locals didn't know where the fisherman was going or who he was feeding in the woods. Fortunately, thanks to the fisherman's food, the cubs recovered. 
The mother looked weak, but the fisherman believed her cubs would survive. Many people may blame the fisherman for helping the bear family, but they cannot understand his motives, because children are always children even if they are forest predators, and it is a human responsibility to help them. If you enjoyed this wonderful story, please comment like, comment and share the video with your friends, see you next time. Let's continue. When Trevor, an elderly man living in Northern California, found abandoned puppies, it was natural for him to hide them and take care of them. Thanks to his Burmese mountain dogs, he was able to create a safe space for them to grow and feel safe. It was only when he got closer that he realized he had made a big mistake. Trevor and his wife Sarah retired to the Rocky Mountains of California. They want to escape the city where they have worked all their lives, away from the hustle and bustle. Sarah is a teacher and Trevor is an art curator, but they've been avid nature lovers all their lives, spending the weekend hiking in the mountains or renting a cabin whenever they can. It's their favorite life, so when retirement age creeps up, they just look at their big house and car and decide they don't need to worry about those things anymore. Their kids were old enough to have a family of their own and it seemed like a waste to have such a spacious home, so they went up in the mountains and they found a beautiful cabin that suited all their needs. They took their two-year-old Burmese mountain dog, Sarah, who was ecstatic to be out in nature, away from all the horrible noise pollution the city has to offer. The three of them are living the life they dreamed of. Sarah can draw and read in her free time, while Trevor makes it his mission to map the surrounding area himself. It was a unique task that allowed him to be both creative and liven up the terrain around the cabin. The rocky cliffs melt into the mossy forest floor where the trees tower above him every day. When he got home, he deliberately drew the forest from his own eyes, and what he saw and experienced that day. This is a passionate project. Over time, he soon had an entire wall of illustrations showing the beautiful surroundings of their home. Sarah also loves walking because she is able to explore until she is restrained. In her world, she is living the life a dog dreams of. Sometimes they see other domesticated dogs around, either from nearby homes or living in the mountains. Sarah approached them often and they became good friends. The only thing they didn't take into account was the weather. Wildfires in California are well known, especially in the north. This is not going to really affect the cities, since those live in the wild. Sarah has a radio connection to the local ranger's office in case of an emergency. Sure enough, when fire season hits, the radio is non-stop, and at first they feel very threatened and anxious. But after a few false positives, they started to relax. Worse, until one year, they had a really bad season. It was their third year or so in the forest and they got a fire warning and Trevor went out and came back ten minutes later and they got an evacuation warning. Sarah was petrified, but Trevor remained determined, stubborn enough to feel that all the fuss was superfluous. How wrong he was that just two hours later, night fell and the sky to the east of their home was distinctly red. The fire was closer to them than they had experienced before, however Trevor remained calm, insisting they would be fine, he encouraged Sarah to go to bed and assured her that he would stay awake to monitor the situation, which is exactly what he has always done. Sure enough, to Sarah's surprise, when she woke up the next morning, she found that the fire had only bypassed their home. In the yard not far from them there was a terrible wind of destruction, and they could see from where the fire had burned through the trees and scared away all natural life. Trevor had spent months mapping his surroundings but it was completely different now, he was intrigued by the changes and how bad things were, he decided to explore the loss around them but he didn't know what will happen to him. Sarah was grateful to be able to get out of the house where she had been locked up all night, and she was curious about all the strange new smells in the air. Just 20 minutes into the walk Trevor caught a very interesting smell and looked around with his head almost in the clouds, marveling at how badly the fire had eroded the trees leaving only charred trunks. He looked for any bird life that might be returning, but all was quiet until Sarah started barking, to Trevor's complete surprise, which she had never done on a walk before. When he finally catches up to her, he sees exactly what makes her so excited, Sarah stops at the base of a log, and at her feet is a group of moving bodies, in different time periods cry. 
It was a litter of puppies, their mother was missing and they were visibly hungry, there were seven of them, all quite large. Trevor figured they must be big dogs that belonged to one of their distant neighbors. Deciding to let them follow him home right away, he managed to bundle them up in his arms and headed towards his cabin, having to readjust the writhing puppies quite often on the way home, but he still managed to bring them all home and he was very proud of himself. In front of her are seven beautiful puppies, all in need of love and care. Sarah was perfect for the job and immediately started breeding the puppies and treating them like her own children. However, Sarah had to hand feed them as Sarah had no milk. Seeing her dog cuddling the puppies like a real mom was the sweetest moment. For a few days Sarah decided to give them both a bath, and until now, they'd kept them in black and gray so they wouldn't be further frightened or traumatized. She just puts them in shallow water and gently rinses their hair to remove all the soot. After the wash she saw some of the most beautiful hair, black and white irregular pattern puppy with gray and brown spots all over the place, they were really unique. It was only when Sarah came to the last pup that she couldn't help noticing how differently its fur had been washed. It is a deep chocolate brown that is very different from all other pups. She dried them and put them back with Sarah at supper time. Sarah tells Trevor how different the puppy is from its fur, which piques Trevor's interest. After the meal, Trevor approached the cat litter and immediately saw the strange one. He gently picked up the pup and took a closer look, when he screamed in shock and couldn't believe it with both hands was a puppy. No, no, it's a bear cub. Trevor rubbed his eyes several times to check if he was hallucinating, but was pretty sure the bear was still there. He screamed at Sarah and showed her, but she just laughed. She bathed the puppy without glasses, which would explain why she didn't realize it wasn't a dog but a bear herself. The two of them don't know how this happened, they just know that the cub is happy with his mother and that Sarah treats him the same. They quickly called wildlife rescue and explained to them that they had found the bear cub for sure and gave it to them as there was no way they would let a bear that thought it was a dog running around in the woods would make national news. Sarah and Trevor are delighted that they played a role in ensuring that such adorable animals as the cubs are given a second chance at life. As proud parents of seven dogs at the same time, they are slowly settling into their new lives.